Hello everyone again. Today's topic is a bit tricky because we're talking about personnel now. We're talking about selecting a supervisor. First of all, let me say that we have different types of supervisors. We have supervisors when we do our undergraduate degree, supervisors for the postgraduate degree or supervisors for postgraduate research degrees. As well as there are supervisors that we have as early career researchers, when you get your first or second postdoctoral position and then there are some also supervisors that you may have as a lecturer or even as an assistant professor in certain institutions around the world depending on what the level is and how fixed the role is if it's tenured, non-tenured, etc. So let's start first with the supervisors that we have in the third and the fourth year of doing a, a, a degree, an engineering degree uh, and how to select, how to go about finding who's the best supervisor for your project. Of course, let me mention that in certain universities there are specific ways of allocating the supervisors and maybe you're not given too much freedom to select one. However, it is always good to know uh, the different ways to approach people. The good thing about being an undergraduate student is that perhaps you know all the academic stuff in your course. So you can approach the ones that you really like and you were inspired by their lectures or you really enjoyed them and approach them and start discussing about a research topic or what they can offer or if you have an idea just bring the idea on the table and see if they want to work with you on that project. However, when you're doing a master's degree, you only know some of the academics in that course. Maybe by the time that you're choosing your master's thesis, you haven't even met most of the academics. So it's a little bit more tricky to find the best supervisor for your project. So actually selecting a PhD supervisor is one of the major challenges, is one of the very first major challenges that you will have as a PhD candidate, is to find the appropriate person to work with him or her for the next three to five years doing a PhD. Is also a kind of a mentor at the same time or a role model that you will learn a lot from them but this is not the actual mentor that you want to have when you're doing a PhD. We'll discuss on another video what is to have a mentor for your PhD and also in general. The same happens for the PhDs who haven't met any of the supervisors and they're applying for the PhD at this institution without even knowing anyone most likely. So in both scenarios what I'm advising is get in contact with those academics. Send them a friendly email and ask them to consider a project with you. So if it's a master's course then they may have a list of projects that you can discuss on. If uh, it's a PhD you can always see on the website through the publications through Google Scholar what kind of research they're doing and then propose something along these lines. So I would advise the very first thing is check their publications, check their Google Scholar, their research gates, their websites, search and learn about that individual. Academics were are very proud of what we're doing, we're solving difficult and challenging problems and we're putting all that out there, we are promoting our research. So if a student is coming to us and doesn't know anything about what we're doing, no clue whatsoever, then is a bit discouraging. So we want to make sure that a researcher or a student who wants to work with us actually knows part of our research. Second step is actually talk to them face to face. I'd rather have a personal face to face physical meeting with a supervisor, especially when we're talking about MSCs as well as PhDs because they take long PhD takes much longer, so you want to develop some sort of a feeling of uh, how it is to work with that personality. And you only have a few minutes or maybe a few times to meet that person before you take the decision, so I would rather try to have a proper communication. It's not just having a quick chat, tell me what to do, is investigating more about what their vision about research is, what are the future trends, for their research, what they're planning to do, what they've been actively uh, working on. So learn more and more about their work. Another thing that you can ask is what is their philosophy for training and supervision, how many PhD students they had so far, what they're doing now, and in general just to get a feeling about 
how supportive the PhD supervisor is. Now on that it's a bit tricky because very successful supervisors usually they have a large team of researchers working for them, meaning PhD students as well as postdoctoral assistants and research fellows, which means that if you are a part of that group perhaps you will be surrounded by other researchers so you can work more uh, with, with, uh, with other people and you can learn from them as well but in that case it may be that you will meet and you will see your supervisor less time so less time to spend on you personally but more time within a group this is not a bad thing necessarily it, it's just different kind of supervision style consider that when you're taking your decision Another thing that you would like also to ask your potential PhD supervisor or MSc supervisor is whether you will be supervised and taught by the same person or another senior researcher will take on the supervision. It happens on certain areas because there are subgroups within a group that one more mature postdoctoral assistant is taking over the supervision of the MSc students as well as the um, younger PhD students. Not that you do not meet at all your supervisor but you are supervised by another researcher on a daily basis and that can also make a difference to what it will be the outcome and how much you will learn. There is no bad and good thing here, it's just uh, the, the different style that you will be supervised. Of course the other thing is the research area. Always check the research area, that's one of the most important things and, and perhaps for certain projects or if you're doing a master's project it will be even more important than the actual uh, uh, supervisor and, and, and who will lead that project. Is the potential, is something that you like, is something that you see that is a, like a future trend and you can further develop that or is very much linked to the industry where you want to go after you graduate from your degree and, and always think about the project and what potentials are in order to develop a very very good project for you. Ask your potential supervisor whether there are projects that you can work on or other projects that he or she has been giving to students and wants to further develop. So what we discussed before as incremental research. So go through that discussion and seek what's there. Perhaps you have an idea that you can combine with that project or you can improve by doing that project itself then I would always recommend to the students to bring their own ideas. At the end of the day, even if you don't do anything with what you've brought uh, on the table, it, you show that you have ideas, you've thought about the topic and you can contribute towards the topic as well as the research doing afterwards. So it's very good to come up with your own ideas and work on them a little bit, not just like a title, but have something more substantial as to what you would like to do and why you would like to do it. And when the supervisor, the potential supervisor brings his, her own ideas, then perhaps you can combine them. So always think about that kind of a transitional time at the beginning where uh, you, know, you can both contribute to something much greater. So not deviating too much from the actual topic of this video which is selecting a supervisor. I will not talk too much about the research but how in fact to, to find the best supervisor for yourself. Perhaps in considering a research supervisor you should consider what Robert Merton identified as the Matthew effect as early as 1968. It is the phenomenon that cited papers often are cited even further than people who have the momentum and already they're quite known, they get to get more attention and become even further known. So if you're working under those supervisors, you will feel that your papers, they will get more cited straight away and you will get more attention as if you were working as for a supervisor who doesn't publish that much. In other words, saying that the influential authors, they gain more influence. So the Matthew effect in fact is that if you manage to find a supervisor who's already quite successful, most likely that will have a positive benefit to your research as well because you will get more traction at the beginning. It is always the start which is the hardest. 
so you will be able to, to gain more attention and more researchers reading your papers which means that you will end up with more citations and, and that will take you faster to the revenue you want to reach. So there are supervisors who are a bit more reluctant to contribute and to offer advice and they're backstepping and they let you do most of the job which is fine to a certain degree because then you're going through the bads and the goods and you're developing your own skills the ones you need to develop through your PhD there are other supervisors who are more actively involved in your research which is also quite great because you're learning you're learning from the leader from the example so uh, both have positives and negatives so don't really uh, try early on to say this is the best supervision than the other both of them they are quite helpful and and the best of course is the combination of the two some elder researchers that put too much work to the younger researchers in order to develop those skills and that's fine of course always try to keep that professional relationship with your supervisor so that there is not too much friction because if the work is too much um, and it is for the benefit of the elder supervisor then you may feel that you're working for someone else but always think that this is a learning period for you and it's not going to be always like that and you're actually learning through that pressure that you're going on of course uh, keep it to a balance everything is, should be in the balance and and also keep that relationship as uh, as good as you can nurture the relationship professional as well as friendly but at the same time working together on the project it, it, it does happen very often that PhD students feel that the supervisor should also work on the project whereas the supervisor is there to supervise the project and, and bring more ideas on the table, uh, guides and help rather than actually doing the job. So there are different supervision styles as we said, but always think about what you gain out of that and if that on the, is, is something positive, keep a nice uh, attitude and, and you know, be happy about what you're doing because you're learning and, and that's the greatest of all is to develop the skills that you required in order to make the next step afterwards. One way to also understand what the potential supervisor's work is and how the supervision will go when you start is to ask a few certain questions during the interview. It happens that sometimes, uh, especially uh, young researchers, do not make any questions during the interview, maybe because they think that that will uh, be quite intimate for the supervisor, but it's not the case. So ask the questions and ask about the supervision style. If you raise the issue in a sensitive and appropriate way, then there is no problem. In that case, a reasonable supervisor will give you uh, a good answer and tell you about what the teaching style is, the supervision style, how many meetings is performing a week, and whether you will be working with other researchers or it will be a bit more like a solo work. So all these things that you have in mind will be answered during the interview. Another way to actually find how supervisors, potential supervisors are working is to look at them during conferences how they make presentations, how they respond to questions, if they are socializing with the students, if they are um, actually explaining, they're happy to explain things. Uh, so conferences are great places where you can meet face to face with your potential supervisor, especially if you are already a PhD candidate and you're applying for a postdoc, so the supervision of your postdoc then uh, a great great opportunity to attend conferences and meet those people if not even working with them while you're applying for the postdoctoral position or for the fellowship of course meeting with other phd students or postdocs who are already supervised by that supervisor it's great always to ask an opinion in a very sensitive and appropriate way just to make it clear, I'm not saying that you should scrutinize everything and you should be asking many different people about the supervision style of that supervisor, either you're starting a PhD or a postdoc, especially if you're offered a scholarship or a job, uh, you should not really spend too much time in, in, in trying to find whether the supervisor is, is, is what you would expect to be. Uh, at the end of the day, you're still learning, this is one of your first jobs, and it will be good to actually get that job. There is a, a plethora of people who are applying for these scholarships and, and, and funded jobs. 
so if you are offered one don't miss that out or don't wait too long for finding out about the supervisor but of course even if it's the best job that you're offered if there is any strain between the supervisor and yourself it's not going to perform well you're not going to be very productive you're not going to be happy and perhaps you will even give up uh, after some time so that's why you need to do a bit of uh, preparatory work you need to start looking for the supervisor but don't overdo it another thing that i would like to say on top of whatever i've said so far is that you should not really look for a supervisor as a product of the university so if the university is good then the supervisor means that it's good if the university is a bit more mediocre or it's not that high in the ranking then it means that the supervisor is not that good so personalities supervisors the supervision style is completely different to what the university does so um, uh, just, just to make that very clear there are brilliant supervisors in low ranking universities and not so good supervisors at the very high ranking universities so always try to think about the type of the research they do uh, how they supervise what the person does um, just try to communicate with that person have a face-to-face -face meeting and, and that will give you the best answer for whether you should go with that supervisor or not. So when you're checking the Google Scholar of those academics and you're trying to find how much research they do and what is the type of the research, always compare with the similar researches in the very similar area. Is very much discipline or even I would say focus area related. So you cannot compare a researcher who is working in civil engineering with another researcher who is working in civil engineering you make a direct comparison equally you cannot compare people who are doing experimental work with those that do computational work and you cannot of course compare people who are doing mechanical engineering with people doing electrical engineering you have to go down to the very specific topic so this person is doing for instance concrete structures then you will compare with someone else from another institution who's also doing concrete structures and is working on the technology of concrete and cement or maybe you will compare with someone who's also doing experimental like the other guy so when you're making that kind of comparative study always uh, make sure that the parameters are fair and equal it's not that um, every researcher should have the same impact and the same applies for kind of how many students they have supervised what the institution is some institutions they have a limit of number of the phd students that one supervisor can supervise at any time uh, some others is a bit more free so more students are coming out it doesn't necessarily mean that if more PhD students are coming out from this supervisor the supervisor has done a better job because it may be that those uh, researchers are more like self-taught rather than being supervised appropriately so I would say that make your uh, exploration find out uh, a few potential supervisors try to see what they have done how they compare each other and then based on what the topic is also, then you should make the decision who are the ones that you will approach. Another very important thing is to help the supervisor to help you in the supervision. So what do I mean by that? Always go prepared, always go with specific questions. You can imagine that busy researchers, busy academic supervisors, they have a lot on their plate. They're working with so many people, a part of teaching, have a high number of collaborations nationally and as well as internationally. They have projects, postdoctoral researchers, a large group potentially of PhD students. So if you're on one of them and, and try to actually learn from that supervisor, then make sure that you are also setting yourself in the right way to learn from that person. So go with specific questions, uh, ask them clever questions and try to get as much as possible. At least try to get the directions of where to look for information. It's not that the supervisor should sit down and teach you every single thing, perhaps yes to a few examples, but the rest is, is self-taught and the research is self-learning anyway. But you should ask the good questions to get the good answers and be able then to find the good solutions. So always have that in your mind that you should try hard to make the supervision as efficient and effective as possible. It is also your job to be part 
of a good supervisory team. One last thing is that there is no standard supervision time, especially for PhD students and for postdocs. So I have been asked that a lot, how often do I see you uh, as, as you know, part of the supervision. So there is nothing contracted really uh, as much as possible as long as uh, is, is feasible. So uh, the supervisor and the PhD student they do find a balance of how often you should see your supervisor. So um, there are universities that uh, PhD students, they only see the supervisor once a month. There are others where the PhD students and researchers are sitting outside the supervisor's office and they are there to ask uh, questions all the time. Uh, I would say something like meeting once a week uh, for sure the supervisor and if need be uh, more than that is a very effective and efficient supervision so it gives you the time to actually work on something, develop something by yourself, learn it the best way, uh, train yourself and, and also uh, keep that contact with the supervisor at all times.